We're in Tannerine, Lebanon, one of the most beautiful spots in the Middle East to climb. I'm here trying to develop some of the hardest climbs in the Middle East and uh, just heading to the crag today to bolt another route and to climb with some friends. Lebanon has been an epicenter of war and peace for centuries. It is arguably one of the most desired plots of land in the world. In 1975, tensions between Christians and Palestinian guerrillas catapulted Lebanon into civil war. Fifteen years later, the war ended, and most of the country was demolished. No one knows the exact number, but they say more than 100,000 were killed. The Lebanese people were desperate, and still are, to move beyond memories of the war. Right now, occupation, ISIS advances, the refugee issues, tensions that were never resolved are being inflamed by the war next door in Syria, to the point that Lebanon hasn't had a president in over a year. It's teetering on the edge of oblivion, but there's a lot more to the country than just war and politics. Did I hit something with that window? You bet your ass I'm coming in here. Ah, oh, grandpa knows how to drive. It's a, just a place of tension, you know? It's tangible here, the way people drive, the way people interact. It's just a pretty stressful place. We woke up pre-sunrise to do some filming. Within about five minutes of shooting, we got stopped by some sort of authority figures. It started with two guys and a few phone calls and by the end, there are about... What the fuck is that, man? Uh, by the end, there are about 10 guys and two dogs. And then the boss comes. I have to call my, my boss. It's, and it's just like ridiculous because no one wants to let us go and then have something happen and be the guy who let the people who did something really wrong go. But we're just visitors here, man. I mean, yeah, our family is here, but we have American passports. Our family isn't really politically connected here. And all I know is I don't know where the fuck Kayla is. Kayla! Try not to lose us. I asked my sister Kayla to come along to help form a deeper connection to our family. She went to college in Beirut. She loves Lebanon. She's extensively studied the history of the country. She'd be a perfect guide and translator. It's crazy, man. Big bullet holes. I decided to come to Lebanon because I've always wanted my family to have a deeper understanding about what I do. And when I learned that there was climbing in the country of Lebanon, I thought that this would be the perfect venue to explore the landscape that my family's been living in for hundreds of years. We're going to visit one of my dad's oldest aunts, and we call her Tante Elvire. She lives in this district with her two daughters, Doha and Sabah. They're my cousins. I came to Lebanon for the first time five years ago, and I kind of discovered this uh, whole new part of our family that I didn't realize that we had. Since then, I've been really excited to share with my brothers and my family that we have this kind of extended family here and that Lebanon is an amazing place. Are you having fun? Yeah, Dad, it's really nice here, huh? You look different. What did you do? I went to a Lebanese barber and he gave me a straight shave. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? It was good. The combination of family, beautiful scenery, mountains, climbing, I think it was kind of the perfect storm for a person like Sam to want to initiate a project like this. I love you. I wish you were here, Dad. Okay. And we all love you, Habibi. I love you too, Dad. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Ferris. We used to hear about your dad, uh, your dad that he was naughty when he was a teenager. 
<laughs> he was naughty. No, no, yeah, no. you know, active. Uh, you know, uh, rambunctious. Yeah, yeah. 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 And really? the Jira, huh? he say, she's saying that he I used know, to man, climb up the though. trees. He used to scale the, the neighbor's buildings. He was always, like, annoying people, kind of. He was, like, a devil, they say. In, but, like, in a cute way. Like, a naughty devil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Despite our family being a mix of Syrian and Turkish and Lebanese, the oldest living members of our family live here and have lived here for a long time. Recently, because of the Syrian war, it's become kind of the only place that we can get together. Lebanon being such a small place, you basically have the huge city of Beirut right next to these big 10,000 foot mountains. The fact that I can get out and get up high so quickly and be kind of out in the mountain skiing is one of the things that I love most about the country. Nobody really knows that Lebanon has mountains like this. This is one of four locations that I've skied while I've been here, and everyone has been really awesome. Because I've skied since I was two years old, it's like riding a bike for me. I put on a pair of skis and I can instantly be like loving life and moving through the mountains and flying down runs. Just the wind in my face and the speed and, and just the ability to control my body from the tips of my toes to the tips of my fingers and having my brain be engaged in that process, I wouldn't trade that for fucking anything. It's unfortunate that it's kind of warming up, but that's why we also have rock climbing. <laughs> My parents started looking at these schools where I could pursue skiing and pursue education. And that was, we found one in Salt Lake City and I left when I was 16. Then I went to college in Idaho on a ski racing scholarship. And I, I mean, after that I was just kind of lost, man. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I remember that Sam was home from college and every day he was studying for the LSAT in the dining room of my parents' house. Our parents were really proud, like, yeah, Sam's studying for the LSAT. Then one day I remember him coming to my dad and he was like, I'm going to Kentucky. He sort of like threatened to like disown me. I think they were worried about me. I think they were hurt and I think they were just didn't understand. Skiing in the morning, Mediterranean in the afternoon. I quit my job, packed my shit, moved out of their house, moved into a house in the middle of the woods of Kentucky with no running water, no electricity. I started climbing more and more and more and more. And that's when I feel like the passion from skiing just sort of flooded into to climbing. The thought of Sam like wearing a suit and going to work is it's almost comical like I could never imagine it just seeing being in Beirut and seeing like how different he is when he doesn't have that outlet was really big for me to understand like why he is the way he is Bean? Hey it's Sam How are you? Hi, Taunt. Hi, Habibi. Good to see you. Hi, Saharo. We've had a lot of really pleasant interactions. Learning about family history, looking through old photos, photo albums, seeing my dad as a kid, seeing my grandparents in love as young people. Wow. Look at the... Let's see. Uh, is this Ferris right here? Is this... If you look at his big... Is this it's, Ferris? I can tell by his head, it's huge. Ferris? Compared to the that's other our, kids. That's, that's our dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really special, and I'm going to come away from this with a much deeper sense of my family roots, and they'll come away with a much deeper sense of who I am as a person, and, and that's just what I've always wanted. Saharo, you asked me about climbing. Yes. Good luck, dude. Yes. And then, and then I thought maybe I could make a living. I could make my life from climbing. Everyone 
who makes a business, he must love it. If he doesn't love his job, he will not be a, have a success. We're uh, blasting north on the highway now, coming out of Beirut, heading up to Tannerine into the mountains. It's like to be climbing later today. It's been a pretty hectic few days in the city, but I think it's good to have that contrast to add perspective to the natural and the wild places that the country has. The process of finding a project is basically like looking at a blank canvas of rock, trying to figure out a way up it. Bolting is the necessary evil blue collar work that needs to get done to set up a rock climb. Bolting a new route in the Olive Grove sector. Started bolting it the other day, but ran out of bolts and killed this drill battery. So just finishing it up so I can try it. Mount Lebanon is completely unique because it has the high peaks of almost 3,000 meters within 45 minutes drive of the coast. It's got all the potential in the world for hard routes. It's really going to be the premier destination crag in the Middle East in the future. Will is the founder of an organization called RAD. And he's really the first one who saw the potential of this area. It's really because of him and his organization that this place is gonna become a global climbing destination. It basically became our mission to help the village here use the resource that they have to promote tourism. It's really creative to sort of find the sequence up the rock. I like being up here by myself just finding the sequence, finding what Mother Nature has sort of created or left. How was it? Having him come climb with us, it's like, it's an honor for us. We always dreamt about it, and now it's happening. Gold, this is the real gold. This is the club, global headquarters of RAD. What keeps me motivated for sure, man, is the big potential that we have here. Usually you hear bad news about Lebanon, and now we're all here to promote good news. So Cheers. Andrew is one of my best friends and one of my oldest climbing partners. We've traveled all over the world together climbing. He's Jordanian, but he also has some connections to Beirut and to Lebanon. The fact that we're here now getting to climb together makes it all the more special. This wall is Masood into the cave, and then the cave area is called St. Jacob's. The holds are fucking perfect, dude. You should try it once, yeah. for sure. I think it's maybe one of the most beautiful routes I've ever bolted. And I've done all the moves, and I've made really big sections of it, and but I still need to try to send it. I want to do this route. The sequence is, the fact that it goes and is possible for me, um, the fact that it's, it will be hard. It, it turned out to be a style that I, I really love, like power endurance, just climbing and moving. There's almost no rest on it. I think it's just a really beautiful style. Uh, fuck, that clip is really hard. <laughs> Ah. Sam was like, my whole life is managing discomfort and managing pain and injury. <clears> Take. <throat> okay. can't even hold on, man. It was special because I knew that it was gonna be the hardest route in Lebanon and maybe the hardest route in, in the Middle East, but my finger was cut open it really mattered for me to try to be the one to make the first ascent of this route.
All right, man, you can derp me. Success is not ever guaranteed. What is most important is trying. Well, it was a good climb, yeah, the AT. Uh, yeah, it will be a good climb when it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow should be better. My passion for this life that I live now and for climbing and for skiing, it's so ruthless because I know what life is apart from that. Being on a slower pace of life, being around fewer people, and even being alone more, like that became uh, really important. The greatest success in my life was following my heart and it leading me to, to this life and this moment. That basically meant breaking the ties with everything close and familiar. Different days you feel different ways. Sometimes your legs are tired, sometimes your mind's tired. You just gotta strap your boots on and try. Tie into the rope and go for it. I mean, that's the whole point. That's, that's what it is to be a climber. From the beginning, Sam was like, do you want to learn how to belay? Like, I really could, you know, need some help and it'd be cool if he would learn. Then every day it became like, oh, hey, do you want to actually climb this one or do you want to climb this one? I'm nervous. Okay. What, what did I tell you about the knot? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Through both loops. And these are all double backed. Nice. Good? Yeah. That's... <laughs> Left. Yeah. And there's even another one. Yeah, oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. Big pull up and left to the horn. Nice. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I can't believe I saved that. I didn't know my little hand could hold this big butt. Nice, Coo. She's been really impressive. How quickly she's gaining comfort with, like, standing on small holds and just, like, relaxing. and Back right, I think. You got to start heading right. OK. It's been really fun. I didn't really even plan that we would climb together here. Like straight right, Koosh. Further? Keep going. It's got chalk on it, I think. Here. Good job. I'm starting to kind of learn how to use my nervousness and anxiety in a more positive way. Just, that's, it's a really difficult thing for me to kind of let go. And... Good? Nice work. Ready? I got you. In the end, I came out with a greater understanding of his life than yeah, you did really good. probably anyone else who would see this or maybe even our family here. <laughs> it's like having Michael Jordan teach a three-year-old how to play in the NBA. <laughs> <Is that laughs> <what I'm like? laughs> it's progress, not perfection. Ready? Yeah. You know, I left home when she was a kid, like seven or eight years old. I basically missed her teenage years and her college years and her development into an adult. This trip is gonna be something that like we cherish for probably the rest of our lives. I have Beirut. I know everything about Beirut, whether it's, you know, the, the history of the political things or the war. Sam has the mountains, Sam has Tanurin. There aren't many things that we've found in common in our lives and in the paths that we've chosen. So to have this place now that we, you know, have so much in common with, I think that's been the most amazing part of kind of this journey. The interaction with Kayla over the last six weeks is the most important one. I had no idea that that would happen. <laughs> Feel good. 
Today is my second to last climbing day in Lebanon after six weeks. The energy at the crag today was, was crazy. Everyone was sending and the conditions were amazing. Dry, windy, cold in the shade. I had a brief moment of thought early on. I feel good. I feel light. And it's always tricky because you go from slowing everything down and trying to recover and expend as little energy as possible to straight into really hard climbing. In those spare moments, I had the thought, I'm gonna fall now, or I'm too tired, or this is, this is the end. Somewhere while I was thinking that, I just went. There was like a moment of blackout, and then when I came back, I was like still on the wall, holding the pinch. Get the jug, dude. Like reach over and grab the fucking jug. It's right there. Then it, everything just kind of flooded back. I had just climbed from the ground to that jug for the first time, and that I probably was going to do the route. Woo! Fuck yes, man. I've seen Sam do this shit so many times. Pulls the send out of his ass last minute. What the fuck, man? Oh, dude. Dude, I wanted that one so badly, but I really didn't think it would happen this trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Ah, way to overcome, oh dude. All oh, the fucking hecticness. Good times. Big day for Tenerine, huh? Hardest route so in town. So much sending, dude. I think I tried that route maybe 20 times or so. It will stay with me, and I. I named it as a tribute to my dad and the stories that my family here told about my dad as a small kid. Shaitan is, is like a little devil, and I guess that's what everybody used to call my dad as a kid. It's one of the proudest things I've done, but it's definitely sad in a way. There's a pretty lonely aspect to following your own path when it's radically different than anything anyone in your family's ever known. And we all need alone time, but we also need family time. I, I really think that Lebanon will probably be a part of my life for the rest of my life. My sister has been coming here for years to Francis and George to have different kinds of silver and gold jewelry made. They make completely custom calligraphy work, and th this is they're just in progress right now. So today I, I came to order a piece that says, um, my roots are rooted, and they'll take it to the calligrapher and bring it back and then go through this whole process. It's about... Uh, the project here, my climbing and skiing roots, and my family roots. So that's why it says my roots. Yeah. 